What do the French make of the five years they've spent under Francois Hollande's socialist government? In 2012, we spoke to five people about their hopes for the new president. Five years later, we meet them again, weeks before the country elects a new leader. In Brittany, in northwest France, dairy farmer Pascal reflects on the struggling agricultural sector. Dr. Stéphane near Lyon, southeast France, talks about healthcare. Former factory worker Fabrice in Normandy has joined the ranks of the long term unemployed. Lionel, a notary, represents a more affluent France, while Adija, who's a social worker, says she's seen a rise in extreme poverty. Five people look back on the past and look ahead to the future. This is a difficult journey for Fabrice. It's the road that leads to the Petroplus refinery near Rouen in North France. Returning to Petroplus is always hard. We generally avoid coming here because it hurts. When you see the factory where you earned a living for years go off the rails, it's not great. The refinery closed in 2013. One year earlier, during the presidential campaign, Fabrice and his colleagues were fighting to save their jobs. Industry is being destroyed. What can we do? Maybe protectionism. What we want is to save French refining. Millions of jobs are at stake. Five years after the last election, Fabrice says his concerns have not been addressed. François Hollande came to visit as a presidential candidate. He promised us that if he became president, he would save the site. He did not do it. It requires some political will from the president, the head of state, if he wants to save his country's industry, our French industry, made in France, as they say. France cannot survive on tourism alone. The 450 employees of Petroplus all lost their jobs, including Fabrice. Just some of the many industrial job cuts made across the country over the past five years. The Petros, as they call themselves, have remained close. How are you, my friend? I'm OK, and you all good? I'm fine. Fabrice meets up with former colleague Christian. Both had thought Hollande would put an end to France's deindustrialization and increase employment but it wasn't to be. Work isn't just about getting paid. It's also about how you relate to the world. You leave your house, you feel useful. When you stay at home, even if you receive benefits, you really feel useless. As Fabrice sees it, none of the social promises have been fulfilled. The industrialization continues. 600 kilometers away, another day begins for medical intern Stéphane, who works at this clinic near Lyon in the southeast. Five years ago, he had hoped for better local access to medical services. I think we should have multitask healthcare clinics where, in the same place, you could have specialists and GPs close to the people every day. Like Fabrice, Stéphane is also disappointed. There could be a more ambitious policy in the development of interprofessional care teams, how we organise them, how we ensure a healthcare team includes doctors, nurses and physiotherapists. It's important in the context of better access to care. Please, take off your shoe. You don't feel the lump? No. So it's just swollen? Yes, it's swollen and it's painful. And it's mostly the foot. Did you twist it? Like most French healthcare professionals, Stéphane supports the medical system. He backed his colleagues at the hospital when they went on strike and says he's in favour of cutting the healthcare budget. But he also thinks that some of his duties should be entrusted to nurses to bring down costs and wants to ensure that everyone benefits from the right treatment. The main challenge is offering better access while maintaining a quality healthcare system, one that doesn't stop people from getting care, like with state medical assistance. That means stopping the stigmatization of universal health care coverage, which requires taking more responsibility in political discourse. Stéphane thinks the government has not done enough 
to defend the French healthcare system, despite the promises made five years ago. Lionel and his large family are also disappointed. Lionel works as a notary. Arsène, Eugène, come back. His family is more affluent. Lionel says he's worried for the future of his children. In 2012, his main concern was the size of the national debt. Spending on health care, for example, and the social security deficit. This debt is being spent on health care today, so my children won't benefit from it. They'll be paying it off. My conclusion is that the situation has not really changed. It remains relatively stable. The debt burden is still heavy. And in the meantime, we've witnessed that it could have dramatic consequences. The Greek episode is, of course, in everyone's minds. According to Lionel, the main problem is still France's debt burden. He works as an associate at this office in the heart of Paris. You have to look at the usage which is permitted for this ground floor plot. The past five years have been unusually lively for notaries. For the first time in the history of the profession, Lionel and nearly 10,000 of his colleagues took to the streets to protest against some of former finance minister Emmanuel Macron's labour reforms. They succeeded in blocking the proposed changes and conditions for training young notaries. The debate around Mr Macron and his perception of regulated professions is a big one. But what I wanted to say on this subject was that there was a discrepancy. We have the outward appearance of modernity. We simplify. Everything must be faster, more efficient, more modern. But when you look at the reality, the regulation has made our practice more complex, nomination methods more complex, and we've created situations that are now quite chaotic. Too much paperwork for Lionel, too many procedures and restrictive laws. Like many right-wing voters, he would like to see more pragmatic policies. In the Dordogne region of southwest France, Adija is at the opposite end of the social scale to Lionel, but shares his sense of disappointment. She set up this charity shop just before the 2012 presidential elections. It's size 38. It'll be a hit in our coming sale. You can wear it with anything, put it with some sneakers, and it's very summery. Adija, who's on the political left, says she's trying to help fight rising poverty. It allows everybody, even if they've only got 50 centimes, to come and buy. People are under no requirement, nor do they feel like they're being helped. She argues that the government has failed to keep its promise to combat poverty. In the district where she works, Adija says demand for emergency food aid has increased by five times. In the last two years, this poverty has got even worse. With poverty comes despair above all. People tell me, what can I do? I come to you asking for help, but what can I do? Tomorrow they'll cut me off. If I pay that, I can't pay for the rest. That worries me. But Adija has not given up and continues to put her energy into helping others. The tax office didn't receive it? I don't know. I haven't paid my housing tax because my income is too low. That's this year's housing tax, and you haven't been able to pay it at all. How much is your income? 600 euros. No, we'll call them. Don't worry, Mrs. Janita. She and her team provide assistance for the poorest people in her village. Adija says that poverty is not just creating a sense of abandonment, but also leading to a rejection of secular society. She began sounding the alarm five years ago, and since then more and more women have abandoned communal activities like sport. Little by little, I stopped seeing these women. I bumped into them in the street wearing headscarves and they made excuses like, I have a bad back, I have a headache. I thought something was suspicious. The authorities say more and more people are retreating into their own communities. Well, here's the result. Adija says her community has declined both economically and socially, something she hadn't expected after five years of left-wing government. There's a different atmosphere in Brittany. Pascal is out in the barn with his livestock. He says his daily life as a dairy farmer hasn't changed much, and he still works as hard as ever to make up for low supermarket milk prices. The policy of the big supermarkets is to have a low price. 
And they never take into account that our costs have gone up. Pascal has struggled even more since the end of European Union milk quotas in 2015. We have become a world market. That means we have to look at what is happening in terms of the price paid to producers in other EU countries and in the rest of the world too, in order to not become too disconnected. A large part of our production is still going to export. That's when I talk about the big supermarkets. It's important that the national market continues to be able to pay us. We always have to fight with them anyway. But he doesn't just rely on exports to survive. Like many other rural workers, Pascal has diversified, which has helped him through rough periods. He remains optimistic and believes that exports still give the industry potential to grow. There is demand from the Chinese, but also from other countries. There's Africa. And on top of that, in France, the age pyramid means that many producers will retire in the years to come. So, there will be more opportunities for young people who want to get into the industry. Pascal didn't vote for Francois Hollande, but he's also the least disappointed of the people we've spoken to. These are five points of view from different corners of France, from towns to villages and passing through Paris a snapshot of the country as it goes to the polls. The French people seem to want more commitment from their politicians. This empty talk has become a real source of frustration. From those who are tempted by the rise of populism. People have tried the right, they've tried the left. And where do they turn now? To Marine Le Pen. To those who have other doubts. I'm finding it hard to make a choice because I don't see a clear program from any of the candidates. Three times as many French people as in 2012 say they are undecided about how they will vote. These are the voters who will determine France's new leader.